What's up guys, my name's Brandon, and today Apple released macOS Sonoma 14.4 to the general public, and for older Macs, or if you just did not update to macOS Sonoma, Apple also released macOS Ventura 13.6.5 and macOS Monterey 12.7.4. But of course, in this video, we're talking all about macOS Sonoma 14.4. So taking a look at the size of the update, it came in at around three and a half gigabytes on my Mac Studio, which was coming from 14.4. 3.1 so the latest previous release before this one so we did also get a command line tools update for xcode that came in at around 724 megabytes now if we take a look at the new build number for mac os sonoma 14.4 it is 23e214 all right, so now what's new here in macOS Sonoma 14.4? And the first thing has to do with FaceTime reactions. So if you pull up your video and you go to the little icon here that shows that your computer is accessing the video camera, you will see reactions down here. And you will notice that these are actually off by default now. So I had to turn mine on, but starting with macOS Sonoma 14.4, Apple disables reactions by default. And the reason for that is because a lot of users noticed that they would accidentally trigger FaceTime reactions over time. So Apple has gone ahead and removed that as the default you know, option of being on. Now you have to manually go in here and enable reactions when you're in a video call or on FaceTime. There's also a change in the clock application. So if you go into the clock app and then go to timers on the far right side, and then you go to the timer alerts here or the alarm that you'll hear, you'll notice that these are different. So I have the previous version of Mac OS on the left and here is 14.4 on the right. These are just all of the new ringtones that we saw on iOS a while back. They've finally made their way to Mac OS and you can still access the previous ones here under the classic section. Now heading into the podcast application, the first time you open up podcast on Mac OS Sonoma 14.4, you will be greeted with this new splash screen that tells you about the big new feature of transcripts. So it says view the full transcript script and search for a word or phrase in the episode. So just like we saw on iOS 17.4, that has now come to macOS Sonoma 14.4. Now you'll also notice a difference here. If you take a look at the previous version, we had listen now over here on the top left, but now it says home again, just like we saw on the iOS version. And then also instead of charts, it used to just say charts right here. Now it says top charts. So now if you're playing a podcast, so I have this podcast playing right now and you tap on the three dots, unfortunately you cannot see the transcripts from here. You do have to go to go to show. And then from here on this section is where you can tap on the three dots or click on the three dots over here. And that's where you will see the new view transcript feature. And when you click on that, you will go into this section right here where you can see everything going on. And unfortunately it does not follow along like it does on iOS. You can see it does not kind of skip to where I'm at in the podcast. So that's unfortunate. However, we do have the search bar up in the top right hand corner. So we have a new search icon there. And when you click on that, this gives you a really long, I think Apple needs to not make that full width. They need to make that a fixed width. But anyways, that shows where you can search for anything, a phrase, a uh, match case or whole words right there. So if I wanted to type in something common, like probably it will take me down to every instance of where the podcast mentions the word probably. So hopefully in the future, we can see this be more like iOS where we can actually, you know, follow along with the podcast in real time as if they were lyrics. But for now, we just have this big wall of text that you cannot even command a on. So if you try to select all, you can't do that in here. You have to just kind of drag it down if you want to copy the whole transcript. However, the good thing about this feature is that it can be used with accessibility features such as text size, increased contrast, and most importantly, voiceover. So you can use your accessibility features with the podcast transcripts, again, just like you can on iOS, or at least they brought that over to macOS. And in the music application, we have the same change here. So before it was listen now, and now Apple has changed that to say home. And then also right here, the big section says home, whereas before it said listen now. And that change also translates over to the books application. So if you go into Apple Books, it now says home instead of read now. There's also a nice change in the Safari application, more specifically surrounding 
corresponding the favorites bar right here. So if you go into your favorites bar, make sure it is showing. If you go to view and that's where you can view or hide the favorites bar. If you right click on one of these, you will see that we now have show title and you can see that it turns all of your favorites, your bookmarks here into just the favicon icon. So if I go to deselect show title, it's only going to show that favicon and it gives us a really clean look here on the favorites bar. And I think this is going to be my new preferred way of, you know, my favorites bar organization on my main uh, section here, since I am in the work tab right now or the work profile, but you can see that it looks very clean from there. Now, if you right click outside of these icons, like on this bar, but outside of it, you can choose to show icons only show text only or show icons and text. So if you wanted to show text only, you can do that now. And you can also now do show icons only. So you don't have to do it individually like I just did. Also in Safari, if you have your Apple Pay cash card set up with a virtual card number, it will now show up in Safari autofill when you go to purchase something not using Apple Pay. Like if you want to buy my new wallpaper collection rewind, you can use that right here in this section. Also with this new update to Safari, web extensions can now open private browsing windows even when they don't have access to private browsing. And then we also have several bug fixes. We have some CSS changes here, forms, full screen, HTML, JavaScript, media. There are a lot of changes in macOS Sonoma 14.4 with the new Safari update. So I will leave this link down in the description below, especially if you are a developer, you are going to find this section very interesting. Also in this update, we get the new emoji that were part of emoji version 15.1. So here's what those new emoji look like. So we have a shaking head sideways, a shaking head up and down. We have a Phoenix, a lime, a mushroom, a chain breaking. We have these new family emojis right here. And then a lot of other people that now face to the right instead of just to the left. This update also includes an update to Apple messages for business. So this is going to allow you to receive updates for businesses that you've opted into. So if you want to get things like your order status, your flight notifications, fraud alerts, or other transactions, you can now receive those with this new update. And here's what that looks like from a business standpoint. Now I will leave this linked down in the description below if you want to read more about this. Also, if you are in Germany, you now have this new option for just saying S or Hey S. You no longer have to say the hey beforehand. There's also a change in the TV application. So if you go into the Apple TV tab right here, and then you go down to where it says newest releases, you'll notice that before it did not have a little arrow there next to it. You cannot go into that section. You just had to kind of scroll through from side to side on previous versions. Now you can go into that section and you can see all of the newest releases in one section where you can scroll up and down instead of side to side. And then the same goes with up next. This up next section did not have an arrow before. You just had to scroll through manually side to side. Now you can click on that and go into here and scroll up and down on the up next. And then we also have several security patches with macOS Sonoma 14.4. So the list goes on. You can see all of these right here. And I will leave this linked down in the description below if you want to read up on the specifics. But if we search for actively, you can see that some of them were being actively exploited. We have this one right here for our T kit. And then also this one right here for kernel. So a kernel bug. And it says Apple is aware of a report that this issue may have been actively exploited. So you might want to go ahead and update because there are several fixes in this update. I mean, you can see the list goes on and on. Only two of them have been reported as being actively exploited. But still, if you want to stay up to date, you know, and keep your device as secure as possible, you might want to go ahead and update because there is quite a list here. Now, as far as the performance goes, I've not really noticed any performance gains here with macOS Sonoma 14.4. So I wouldn't count on anything changing performance wise. However, with battery life, you might see a minor bump. So I noticed a minor bump in battery life, of course, not on my desktop here, not on my Mac Studio, but on my MacBook Pro, my M1 Max MacBook Pro, I have been running the betas of Sonoma 14.4 and battery life seemed to improve over version 14.3. So you might see a jump in battery life, but don't expect a major jump in performance or battery life this late into the macOS Sonoma cycle. So now should you update to macOS Sonoma 14.4? And I would say absolutely. I mean, again, given the fact that we have so many security patches in this update, a ton of changes to web kit with Safari version 17.4. And then also some of the minor changes like, you know, the Safari favorites bar change or, you know, the new emoji that you're going to get or the new podcast transcriptions. 
things like that, you know, I would recommend going ahead and updating at this point. It's very unlikely that you're going to run into any type of major issue or major crash or any type of issue with like your Final Cut Pros, your Photoshop's. It's a little bit late into the cycle to really experience any type of issue with those. So I think you're pretty safe to go ahead and update to Sonoma 14.4. I've gone ahead and done it on all of my machines. And then lastly, let's talk about what to expect next from Apple. So the next major Mac OS version is going to be Mac OS Sonoma 14.5. Now, I would not expect to see that until some point in mid to late April. So it's going to be a while before we see that next macOS version. However, if you are a beta tester, we should see the first betas go out for macOS Sonoma 14.5 very soon, most likely next week. Now, in the meantime, between macOS Sonoma 14.4 and 14.5, we could very well see a macOS Sonoma 14.4.1 to patch up some bugs, so mainly security issues, you know, any type of bug fix update, we could see that at some point in late March, potentially even early April. But again, that's just going to be for bug fixes. We're not going to see any type of big changes or features in that update. So that is Mac OS Sonoma 14.4. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to go ahead and subscribe to the Apple Den newsletter. If you have not done so already, just go to the link in the description below. I always post about the latest news going on and it's free. You get an email once a week right in your inbox. So check that out. And if you enjoyed this video, if you want to see more software update videos like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel by clicking that subscribe button down below and give this video a like if you did enjoy it. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.